Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys a breastfeeding live that I did on Facebook a couple of weeks ago with some other wonderful, amazing creators. Not only are they content creators, but they are millennial moms who breastfeed. I will be sure to put their social media handles in the description box so you can make sure to follow them and check out their amazing content that they produce. Now this conversation on breastfeeding was just the beginning. We barely scratched the surface of all the different things that you can talk about when it comes to breastfeeding. But it was a necessary start to the conversation and I hope that you enjoy it. If you have any questions or comments about breastfeeding, please make sure that you put it in the comment section below so that we can respond and answer your questions. Let's get into it. Well, we're gonna start with some introductions. Hey, hey, hey. As you can see, we are moms. <laughs> <laughs> and children are going to be all up and through this lab, okay? So y'all just extend some grace, okay? Anyways, my name is Soraya Scott, or AKA Safe Space with Soraya. Would you ladies like to introduce yourselves? Are you on mute, sis? <laughs> I was on mute. I was no, I oh. was on mute. I had to mute because Jackson is turning up. <laughs> My name is Charlene, first time mom. Here's Jackson. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, that's me. <laughs> hey everybody. My name is Deja McGall. Uh, I am a mom of two. I love being a mommy. Uh shout outs to my hubby as well, Tyler McGall Sr. And I'm so excited about this live with the ladies tonight. Yeah. Oh, I, I guess I should have talked about me being a mom, shouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all did so good. Uh, well, I got two kids as well. I got Avery and I got Carter. And shout out to my husband because my kids wouldn't be here if I didn't have a husband. <laughs> <laughs> <So>. <laughs> So yeah, so let's start with just a little icebreaker. So first question, hey, 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 please calm down. Thank you. First question is, how long have we all been breastfeeding? So with Avery, I breastfed for six months. And with Carter, we are on month four. With him. Awesome. So with me, you guys, I lasted for 31 days of breastfeeding. <laughs> And I'll explain why a little bit later in the video, but we did a good 31 days of that gold milk. <laughs> awesome. Well, for me, um, this is my second time around with my first son, who is now five. I breastfed him until 19 months. Um, and Timmy, our second born, Timmy is 10 months, going on 11, so... I've been breastfeeding him 10 months, going on 11 months. So we give God praise. <laughs> that is awesome. Now, anybody who's in the chat, feel free to drop how long you've been breastfeeding or how long you want to breastfeed. Let us know a little bit about that journey for you. Um, our second question, which I find this, I've been thinking about this and I wanted to put it in our little millennial moms chat just to see like what the funny like things are but what was your first meal Avery thank you what was your first meal after giving birth so you ladies can go go with that one what was your first meal after giving birth you want to go first days or yes okay <laughs> so I remember more so from well both boys but Timmy in particular Eat those. Uh, I gave birth at Mercy Hospital, and they have these turkey dollar roll sandwiches. <laughs> oh, I could not wait to get one because they were so good when I had them with TJ, and they were so good the second go around. So as soon as I was able to eat, I got those little dollar rolls, and it, it's just a little roll with turkey and mayonnaise on it, and mm. these little them little cranberry cup drinks. I was throwing them things back. <laughs> I was so happy. So, yes, that was my first meal. Mercy Little Dollar Rose. So, my first meal, which is so crazy because 
I just imagine after having him, I wanted to have sushi because I couldn't, you know, we couldn't have sushi while we're pregnant. But um, all I wanted was some um, Apple Jacks from their from their pantry area. Like I was like, I want some Apple Jacks. I want some cereal. That's all I wanted. And when I tell y'all, like you said, back to back, Deja, I had so many bowls of cereal while I was in the hospital, like for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's all I really wanted. So. I don't know. It's so funny because the craving, I guess the cravings came later because I didn't really have no cravings when I was pregnant with him. But them Apple Jacks smacked. They were fire. <laughs> <laughs> we got your husband in the comments. He said, he, said <laughs> 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 he did. He went and got them Apple Jacks faithfully every time I wanted them. Thanks, babe. You're amazing. I shout out to him. I didn't shout my husband out like y'all shout y'all out. Shout out to I Carter. <laughs> so with Avery, I had um a six piece bone in combo from Wingstop. <laughs> you make it look so look, look geek. <laughs> like so you know after the epidural they tell you or during the epidural you can't eat. And mm -hmm. so afterwards, they're like, well, it's been a while, you know, just, um, you know, eat something light. And as soon as the nurse was giving me that whole spill, Lee walks in with the whole bag of, <laughs> of wing stuff. And I was just like, sorry, ma'am, that's not it. Um, and then with Carter, I think my first meal after him was um, a McAllister's Club. So I did better on eating lighter. But, you know, I kind of feel like they wanted me to do, like, the turkey little sandwich or maybe a little soup. No, I was all in because I was starving. <laughs> I was starving. You had the good stuff, too. Shout out to Lee. <laughs> yes, and my brother-in-law. My brother-in-law was the one who went and got it. And then I think my my godfather was the one who went and got the wing stop. So, yes. They, yeah, they did that for me because I was oh god I was starving. So. I, I want to go back to one of the comments you asked. Um, how long have people been breastfeeding? My husband wanted everybody to know that he doesn't have. Food. Oh, okay, <laughs> got it. Thank you, Tyler. Thank you. <laughs> got you. All right, so we got a couple of discussion topics um, when it comes to breastfeeding. And like I was telling the ladies, like, this is just going to kind of guide our conversation. But we're just going to see, you know, where we go with this, where where the spirit takes us, basically. Um, and just, I don't know, we're just going to discuss, just going to talk. So, the not, well, the first question that we can start with is, what did you think breastfeeding would be like? Before you started, when you just found out you were pregnant, what did you think your breastfeeding journey was going to look like? I I can't say that I had a perception of it, but I just thought it was one of those things that, especially more so with TJ, that would come natural. Like, you know, I give him my breasts, he take it, bada bing, bada boom, we done. But I would say, like, for him, that proved that wrong because what I had to learn was breastfeeding was new for me. Even though he was a he was a baby and you would assume a baby, you know, know how to suck, you know, a bottle or, you know, nurse, that that's what they would do. But no, he had to learn how to latch and I had to learn, you know, how to latch with him, really. So I would... I'm shocked that it was a learning situation for us both. Yeah, so that's my take. Yeah, Charlene, what was it like for you? <laughs> that comment is for you. <laughs> Thank you, babe. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the husbands for their support. They came through. Yes. <laughs> um, so for me, I took um courses with Aeroflow. I don't know if y'all, I'm sure y'all have heard of it because they give the, the free breast pumps through your insurance. I took a lot of courses. So I had a lot of information, which 
I wouldn't say not to take the courses, but um, maybe start early on. I kind of started later on in my pregnancy, and I think I was overwhelmed by so much information. Um, so I kind of went in with a checklist of what to do, but I don't think I was really prepared for the what ifs. Um, so, yeah, I think, yeah, I think I went in with, like what to do, how to latch, you know, how to get him to latch, things like that, like a checklist. So, yeah, that's what I have in a nutshell. Yeah, my experience, Deja, was kind of like yours, um, going in with Avery. Oh, Avery. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, but it was kind of the same way where I felt like, Oh, this isn't going to be that bad because, you know, you, you follow the um, what to expect when expecting or whatever app. And it's like, oh, babies are practicing how to suck. Babies are practicing how to swallow and things like that. And so I just assumed that, okay, he's just, she, well, she's just going to come out and she's just going to latch and it's going to be that golden hour and my milk is going to flow and everything is going to be good. But... I did not prepare myself. So like Charlene, I think that's amazing that you went and took classes to like learn about it. Cause I didn't, I was just like, oh, we'll just figure it out once we get there. But it was not like that with me and Avery. It was, it was rough, it was hard. Um, and, and so this kind of leads to my second question of what made you decide to breastfeed initially? So for me, um, I had people, you know, in my community, my mom had breastfed my siblings for some time, um, different church members saying, you know, how they breastfed their kids. And at the time, you know, my peers who already had young children, just seeing them breastfed and just wanting to do something like the natural way was one of the reasons why I wanted to breastfeed. Um, I took some classes as well, uh, the newborn class, and they kind of like touched on breastfeeding. We took a breastfeeding class. So I would say altogether, just the uh, the the community around me, I want to say like good encouragement to, you know, consider it. And also I would like to add, just, you know, hearing people saying how that, you know, it's a, it's a different level of bonding with your child. So for me, um, I thought it was cool. Like, I can produce milk? What? Like, God gives me that? And just that, like, oh, my goodness, God gives us what we need. He supplies the need. And why not? So I was excited mm -hmm. for it. Like you said, Deja, my peers, you, my close, some of my close friends breastfed, my sister. So, yeah, like everyone around me did. And I just thought it was a cool thing. And just him getting his nutrition, yada, 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 all that, I thought would be, you know, great. And it's just motivating me to do it. So, yeah. For me with Avery, um, I decided to breastfeed because that's what I saw other people doing. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, oh, okay, I can do that too. You know, and it it kind of turned into trying to keep up with the Joneses almost. Because it was like I saw people on social media and I was just like, okay, yeah, that's no problem. If they can do it, so can I. And then I got into it and I was like, I don't. This is this is way more <laughs> than I expected it to be, you know. Y'all yeah. y'all keep going. I'll, <laughs> I'll be right back. But um, here's the next question: What was your plan going into it? Did you want to exclusively breastfeed? Did you want to pump? Did you want to do like a combo feeding type thing? What what was your plan going into it? When you say combo feeding, what do you mean, like uh, breast milk in? formula yeah breast milk and formula what was your plan yeah. well so for me I knew I knew I wanted to I was like where's the ride go <laughs> I knew I wanted to 
Yeah. Mom, real quick. I'll be right back. I was fine. I was just like, whoa, it just transformed. So I knew with TJ, because everything was just brand new, period. Off the back, Timmy, I, you know, we did it one time, so I knew I was going to do it again. But more yeah. so, TJ, since that was my first time, I just had the mind to want to breastfeed. Um, like, that was my soul mind. Did I have moments where I was like, you know what, this for the birds. <laughs> where I wanted to quit, because, like, I'm sure we'll talk about it later. It's, it's true discipline, sacrifice. Uh, it, it's a lot. It yeah. is a lot. So, we used to get, like, the little formula simulac thing sent to our house, um, you know, it's like samples. They find out you're pregnant. You know, they want you to buy their product. So mm -hmm. we just used to collect them. And so they were stored in the basement. Um, but I knew I knew I didn't want to use it. Let me glance at the caps, the thing, because I don't want to jump ahead. What did you think before breastfeeding you with your plant? Okay, so I'm going to leave it there because I got some more I want to say, but I don't want to no. get ahead. <laughs> no, go ahead. Like, however you feel led to okay. share, go ahead. Okay, yeah, good. So I'm gonna keep going. So yes, with TJ, my plan was breastfeeding. Um, it was in the hospital. It was like a learning, a learning curve. I'm very grateful for the uh, lactation nurses that came in to give me tips. Um, even with that, like seeing the lactation, like we had to go back after leaving the hospital because I just didn't feel, I didn't feel confident. With me nursing TJ, it was like, you know, one of those things where is he really getting anything? Like, especially during those first, so, you know, that first day where you don't have, you know, your full milk hasn't came in, but he's getting that, uh, I can't say the word, colostrum. He's getting that. And like, that just made me nervous because I don't know what you're doing. You know, are you just, you know, sucking a passy or are you really getting milk? And I would also like to say, like, when, when I did come home, nobody really prepared me for cluster feeding. I don't, like, I feel like I've heard the word, but I Talk really. Talk about it, please. Because <laughs> cluster feeding almost took me out. Yes. Like, I heard about it, but you really don't know about cluster feeding until you experience it with your child. And especially, I mean, I can only Im imagine, you know, People who don't breastfeed, you know, you can't just pop your boob up off, you know, on demand. You know, you got to get up and go make a bottle. So that's a whole nother story. But in regards to to the cluster feeding, like that made me feel like, oh, my God, is she is he really getting anything like you hungry again? And so I remember it was like day two of breastfeeding. Oh, I'm sitting up in the bed, Tyler over there getting his precious sleep. And I was like, you know what? I quit. Like, I woke him up and was like, can you go ahead and go in the basement and get this Similac? Because this too much. And he got up. And my husband is a huge breastfeeding advocate. Like, if it wasn't for him, I would have quit a very long time ago and probably wouldn't even did it with Timmy. But he was like, you could do it. You can do it. And so he got up and I would nurse TJ and he'll look and be like, cause he did the classes with me too. That ain't a good latch. Pop him off and let's do that again. Like he was that much of a great coach and like him being hard on me because he had the knowledge as well. I was able to stay the course. So I have more I want to share, but I don't want to talk the whole time. So I'm going to pass the, pass the ball. <laughs> Go ahead, Shailene. I forgot the question. <laughs> Deja was talking what about was your this. plan going into breastfeeding? My plan, was it that one? Um, my plan was to um, breastfeed and to pump. So I had heard that, like, you're supposed to wait, like, six weeks if you can to start pumping so that you won't be, like, an overproducer and, you know, do, like, too much. So my plan was to do um, the full six weeks of just him on my boob and then um, transfer over to, like, not exclusively pumping, but doing both of them. Um, so, yeah, I'll answer that and I'll stop there. <laughs> I'll, let me say something right fast. I'll 
that whole story. <laughs> um, I didn't even answer the question. My plan was to nurse ex- to nurse and pump only when I'm away from him. Do you do that now, Deja? Yep, I do that now. Okay, so oh. you're you're pretty much exclusively breastfeeding for mm-hmm. the most part. Yes, I would like to say I hate pumping. I really do, but I I do it so that he can have his milk still outside yeah. of being with me. Yeah. So with Avery, um, I really didn't have a plan, and I feel like that might be where um, why our journey didn't go as as I as well as it could have because I just kind of went into it. I was just like, oh, I'll, you know, I'll just try it and we'll just see what happens. But I really wasn't in the mindset to like really mentally focus on it and really, you know, put in that work to it. Um, Cause I just didn't, I just, I really didn't have a plan with her. Um, and so what we ended up doing with her was um, I ended up combo feeding the entire time. I would put her on the breast first and then I would give her a supplement, a formula. Um, and then we also started that too because she ended up having jaundice in the hospital. And that scared me so much as a first time mom. Like, you know, I I felt like I'm already failing my baby because she's not getting enough. You know, she wasn't, she didn't have that first poop yet. And they were like, we need a supplement, we need a supplement. And I was just like, okay, I guess I'm not, you know, producing anything. And that I now know that wasn't true. I was just producing colostrum, you know, but, um, but that scared me really, really bad with her. And so we started um, supplementing and we did that all the way through um, until six months. And then at six months, I just switched over just to all formula because I kind of felt like, kind of like you were saying, Deja was just like, I'm tired. I'm not, I can't keep doing this. You know, I was just like, and she was getting, I felt like she was getting, um, like the formula was meeting all her needs anyways. Cause I, I wasn't producing that much oh. of breast milk to where it was like filling her up. So I was just like, we'll just do our formula and just, just be done, you know? Um, and then with Carter, I went into it knowing more one, cause I'd already gone through it with Avery and then two, um, I was like, I, I want to exclusively breastfeed, you know, I want to just do all breast milk. And because I'm pretty much a stay at home mom, I was like, I'll get the pump for like emergencies or if I need to pump a bottle, but I can just put them, you know, directly to the breast since I'm, you know, at home all the time with the kid. So, um, and thankfully and praise the Lord that that's what I was able to do for a while. Um, but now we're at the point where, um, we're combo feeding again. So, um, I've started to pump bottles and then I will like alternate. So he'll get a full bottle of breast milk and then he'll get a bottle of formula next because his doctor was like, oh, he's not big enough. But I mean, honestly, my baby looked big enough, but I was like, okay, doctor, (laughs) If you want us to supplement and, you know, I was like, okay, whatever. But even with that, um, I'm still pumping and I'm still nursing and, you know, everything. Um, But yeah, but now we're at this whole combo, combo phase again. So, yeah, but that was my plan. So we kind of already started to to touch on this, but what happened on you all's journey that you were not prepared for? Um, as I mentioned, the cluster feeding, <laughs> um, I would say that was the biggest, the cluster feeding and also just the, the demand of feeding period beyond cluster feeding, like getting up every two to three hours to nurse, you know, your sleep being broke. Um, that one is huge right there. It's like, I remember with TJ Morris, so even with Timmy, because they're four years apart. So that was just like a culture shock. Like, oh, we're back here again. We, you know, was cruising the cell because TJ, you know, he's sleeping 12 hours independently and stuff like that. So 
just that whole process of nighttime feedings, trying to be alert, you know, afraid that, you know, you'll fall asleep with him in your arms, nursing, uh, having that fear. So I, I wouldn't, I was not prepared for the zombiness of breastfeeding. Um, I wasn't prepared for like just being out in public. Um, a lot of people have so many say souls of people nursing in public, you know, why you got your boob out, you know, sexualizing it. Um, and also just with my comfortability, it's like, you know, I know that this is my baby's food, you know, how he gets his nourishment, but, you know, just being comfortable if I was to breastfeed in public, uh, more so talking with TJ, um, of nursing, you know, what do I do in public? What if somebody look at me crazy, say something, you know, how how am I going to feel? What am I going to do? And also, I wasn't prepared for the many places that weren't prepared for breastfeeding moms. Like, we've spent many days in the bathroom, nursing, you know. Um, <laughs> I got this one funny story. I'll share that one later. But, wow. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't prepared for the cluster feeding either. I wasn't prepared for, um, and so this is really talking with Carter um, because I exclusively did it with him. So starting with the cluster feeding and the all through the night and that kind of thing, um, I wasn't prepared for how sore my nipples were going to be. I was like, I, I, I kid you not, at one point I was like, Lee, just give him a bottle of formula and I'll pump in a little bit because it just, it hurts so bad. And so thankfully um, uh, I went to a lactation consultant. Well, I did a virtual session with the lactation consultant and she kind of talked me through how to make sure that he was latching correctly. And that helped a whole lot. And also nipple cream helped a lot. Um, but yeah, that almost, that almost took me down. <laughs> Just him latching on. It was, oh my gosh, it was so bad. Um, you're, you're muted, sis. <laughs> Have you ever been in gorge? Listen, <laughs> that pain, oh my gosh, that is rough. So like, um, actually this past week when we were in Disney World, I got engorged because we were out and about and I had already pumped um, him some formula. So he, I'm not him. I did not pump him formula. I had pumped him breast milk <laughs> and gave him a bottle while we were out walking around. And Disney World is definitely breastfeeding friendly. Um, but I just, I, I just didn't stop. I was just like, oh, I'll be okay. Mm. I was not okay. <laughs> it was sore and it, they get heavy, they get tight. Yeah. Um, and so I just, I went and stood in the shower for like 10, 15 minutes and just let the warm water, you know, go and just kind of give myself a massage. And then I, then I let him nurse like right before bed. Um, and that helps, but that engorgement is no joke. No, no joke at all. This one, when I was, um, with TJ, the milk had spread it to under my armpit and I had to move it back to my breast so that it could release. It was like hard knobs. Of Real, under like, like right underneath? It was oh my God. under my underpit where you put your deodorant. It was <laughs> milk. <laughs> oh my I God. had to push it back to my breast. Wow. Yeah. It's had it is it painful yes mm. it's painful like just being engorged you don't want nobody to hug you like mm -hmm. even if you were to nurse your baby with an engorged breast like that would hurt because it is yeah. ugh, i'm sorry i felt it <laughs> <laughs> flashbacks <laughs> Okay, Charlie. Um, so like I told you all earlier, for those of you who just came on, I breastfed for 31 days. 
So I made it at least a month. That's good. That you girl, that you, good. y'all know that, that that is a huge accomplishment. It is. In- I appreciate. It. Thank you. So our journey, I said, I went in like determined, wanting to breastfeed him, but I I ran into a lot of difficulties, and I won't name them all, but. The main thing, two of the main things was I developed preeclampsia after having him. So um, after having him, I had to go back to the hospital, stay in the hospital. And then I left with all these medications that just totally had me out of whack. Um, They said that it wouldn't interfere with my milk supply, but I believe that it did. And it also mess you are already really really sleepy and sleep deprived. But I feel like the medication just made me really droopy like. And also he has, or had, because I don't want to say it anymore, but he had um, acid reflux. So he would um, spit up through his mouth and nose and it would be like really scary. So he wasn't keeping my milk down. So that's when we went on and transitioned him over to, I think we we did cereal for a minute. We tried, or just rice, I mean. And when we did the rice with just... um, the milk, he didn't really like it. So his pediatrician recommended him to be on Infamil AR. So he's able to hold his milk down. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Um, but yeah, for the most part, I ran into that. And there was something like I was not prepared for. Like there was more of a health issue. So um, with cluster feeding and dealing with the medications, making sure my blood pressure was sta- um, stabilized to where... I wouldn't like have seizures or anything like that. I had to take care of my health. Then he had acid reflux. So we didn't get any sleep because we were like staying up with him to hold him up. And it was just a lot at once. So we made the decision to be like, okay, we got to take care of our health. And as long as he's healthy, he got to get on this formula. So yeah, um, I know we're talking about breastfeeding and we're all team breastfeeding. But if you're like a mother, a new mom, and you're having like a lot of challenges, it's okay to transition over to formula. I'm laughing at Isaiah, no sleep. Can we put emphasis on no sleep? Like people really do not warn you. You do not get any sleep the first month. We just started really getting sleep and he's almost four months. But, and he's sleeping through the night. We praise God. Awesome. Oh, hallelujah. But that first month, literally, like no one tells you that you get no sleep because they're sleep, they're eating like every two hours. So, um, but yeah, I want to encourage like new moms don't because I felt it was really a struggle for me. Like literally I was in the hospital, like going be like back and forth with my um OB. Like I just feel so bad. Like I just don't want to give him the poison. That's what it felt like. Like I'm giving him poison. But, um, you know, he's healthy, he's growing, and yeah, I just had to, you know, you just have to make the right decision that works for you and your baby, so yeah. I love the encouragement. Yeah. I want to, before we move on, run through some of these comments, because they jamming in the comments, so let's go back. Jax looks so handsome. Oh, thank you. He over here clowning. We talked too much about cluster feeding. Now he cluster feeding. He want a bottle every 30 minutes. Christian said her first meal after birth was sushi and a grilled chicken wrap with a large salad. (laughs) (laughs) Detail. (laughs) He also said, ooh, child, the cluster feeding. (laughs) Tyler, my husband, said he ready to tell his story. (laughs) <laughs> and I said, said milk dags coming soon <laughs> yes <laughs> so I think we're all caught up hold on Deborah D. Perry no sleep at all sis that's prayer time for real and wow I'm not a mom yet but woo lol yes. from Chantel Maria thank y'all for chiming in this is an awesome conversation um oh okay i will wait (laughs) to the end (laughs) okay um so there was a couple of things that you guys brought up while you were talking 
um, one of the things you guys brought up was about like, um, like when your milk supply gets low and how like your medications can affect it and things like that. Um, and I know that this is a detour like off of where we were going, but just in case somebody is in the chat or somebody is going to watch this again, um, when those things do happen and your, your, your supply decreases, do you guys have any tips on what you could do to increase your supply or maybe maintain it or any supplements that you've tried that, that worked? What, what would you tell a mom who, who is dealing with that right now with their supply is dipped and they're trying to get it back up or maintain it? Um, I would say <clears throat> like your supply is low. And, and I know, you know, this is no, no shade or nothing. I'm not speaking no harm against anybody that supplements. But if you feel like your supply is low, keep your baby on the breast. Keep that stimulation going. Because when you supplement, when your breast is not getting any action, you're telling your body, I'm not breastfeeding no more i'm a you know slow down milk production so you already got the mindset that you're not making enough but if you're not also if if you take away the action of that milk producing mm -hmm. then that will truly impact your supply and and i'll tell you this because i've had many times where i felt like oh my gosh i'm not making enough um i kept timmy on the boob um, they have different things like if you're pumping called power pumping and it's basically just telling your body oh my baby needs more milk so you can do things like that but as far as products wise um, what's the name of the cookies it's by is it by milk moms who is it by lactation it's the, it's the lactation cookie it's from Target. Yeah, I think it's like milk, munchkin milk maker munchkin or something milk, like that yeah oh one of my kids <laughs> munchkin milk make or something like that those yeah. cookies are fire oh my gosh look yeah. just ate a bag like an hour before this live <laughs> yep <laughs> those cookies really help my milk supply um so i'm grateful for that um i've also bought like different protein powders that will help with your milk um Booby Bars is the name of the brand. I used to eat those to help with my milk. Um, but also, too, like, just eating right. A, a lot of your milk production is with, you know, your foods that you eat, your water intake. Like, your milk depends on that, too. So, really, like, chugging that water down. My son literally just came here and took my water bottle. Speaking of water. <laughs> um, so, those are some things to help. And, like, you know, not being afraid to reach out to somebody. You know, I've had conversations with my OB about breastfeeding. And because, you know, thankfully she's, you know, was a breastfeeding mom. So it was pretty cool to get that. I've called lactation consult uh, consultants, um, Dallin. They have a hotline and resource. So don't, and, I, and I'm sorry if I'm being long-winded. Don't, if you feel like you're not making enough, Know, know that you are, like have that mindset that you are, like your body makes what your baby needs. And like, also I wanna say, don't compare yourself to who you see on social media. Some women can pump and get eight ounces in 15 minutes. So me, honestly, when I pump, I'm getting like two ounces out of each breast. But Timmy drinks three to four ounces. So I'm okay with that because that's what my body makes for him based off his need when I nurse him. But if I had that mindset of, oh, I ain't got no eight ounces, then I would, you know, succumb to supplementing formula and as a result telling my body to slow down production. So I have so much more I want to say, but I hope y'all got something out of that. You know what? That is such a good point, Deja. Um, like with Avery and then even with Carter a little bit too, it was my mind that was in overdrive telling me you're not, you're not making enough. They're not getting enough. And then hearing other people comment like when I, like if my baby would cry after they finished nursing, you need to feed that baby. Oh. And so it told me or it I guess it confirmed my anxieties or my fears that oh, I guess they're not getting enough, so maybe I should just stop. I'm not making enough. And that's not true. 
Like you are making enough. Like you said, you're making exactly what your baby needs because whenever they nurse, they're like their DNA, their saliva is literally telling your body and telling your nipples, hey, this is how much I need. This is how much I want. And something else that helped me too was realizing that, you know, when they're first born in those first couple of days, they don't need that much formula or nothing to eat, you know, that much anyways. Like I'm thinking they need two ounces, four ounces as soon as they come out. And that is not true. They need maybe like a teaspoon or a tablespoon or something like a that. Piece, like a pea size. That's, is right. all they need. That's all they need. So, you know, if you're, you know, just starting um, your breastfeeding journey with your baby or for your next baby, just know that you don't have to be making, and Deja, I like that you pointed that out too. You don't have to be pumping eight ounces, you know, when, once they first come out, because you're, that's, that's called oversupply. Okay. Let's just call it what it is. That is oversupply. And it goes viral on social media because I mean, social media is all about the extra and the over the top and you know, whatever. Um, but don't feel bad if you're not pumping that much. That's okay. You're making exactly what your baby needs. So like right now, I got sick a couple of weeks ago um, and my supply dipped really, really bad after that. Um, and so right now I'm only able to pump maybe two to three ounces each session. Um, and I just combine those little, you know, ounces until I can make a full bottle. Um, which Carter's at like four and a half, five ounces right now. That's what he likes to eat. That's where he gets satisfied. Um, but I mean, and I, I started to feel bad because I was just like, well, why am I not pumping more? Why am I not making more? Whatever. And it's just like, it's okay. Like, do the lactation snacks, drink your water, get your rest, you know, and keep keep putting the baby to the breast as much as possible as you can or keep pumping to replace those feedings. Like, well, whatever, but I have to tell myself even right now, you're making enough. You're giving your baby exactly what he needs. So it's okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah. I love it. Well, for me, I think I definitely, definitely panicked in those moments. Like, oh my goodness, because like you're a first time mom. Well, I'm a first time mom, so I really didn't know. Um, but what made me realize, like, girl, you got this. Um, what did he have? John, he had John this too. So when he was under the light, we had to, the nurse, she was an OG nurse and she was just like, just go ahead and pump, you know, and put him in the, um, syringes and we can just put it on his binky and let him just, you know, be comfortable because he had to sit under the light for like a whole, um, 24 hours. So I was like, I'm not going to be able to do it. Like, he's not going to be, like, I'm not pumping anything. And I pumped, and yeah, I felt like seven syringes. I was like, oh my goodness, I can do this. Like, I was so happy. Once you see that milk come in, you're like, oh yeah, like, I can do it. Yeah. So, yeah, it is encouraging to see it. Like you said, when they first come out, like, you don't see the milk. So you can be like, oh, is my baby eating enough? Are they, are they eating anything? But they are. Um, so don't be discouraged from that either. I would like to add uh, another way to like be assured that your baby is getting something is, um, you know, counting their pee pee diapers and their poops. Um, that helped a lot with like with TJ. Like, oh my God, we was like tracking like mm -hmm. pee pee diaper number one, pee -pee number two. You know, oh, there's some poop, you know, that we was looking for. So that helps to be assured with that. Of course, you know, watching their weight. Um, there's no way you can put a baby on your home scale. But uh, another mom taught me is to, like, weigh yourself first to see your weight and then have your, you know, husband give you the baby and just subtract those two numbers. So that was, like, another way I was able to be assured that Timmy and TJ were getting enough uh milk. Um let's see, that's all I want to say. <laughs> and you have like a million checkups that you no one warned me about that either. You're going to the doctor a whole lot. So you get <laughs> weigh ins and you know just to check on a baby and stuff. So you know your his or her PD will let you know if the baby is getting enough. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I uh, 
I, and I feel like people, uh, well, going back to the dip in production, um, for new moms, uh, please know that like you will see drops of milk, but you know, don't let that scare you again. Keep producing, but you know, when your cycle comes back, you'll see a difference in your milk supply. You know, if you're pumping, you'll you'll see that. That's just the hormones in your body. Um, everything will return as normal once Sister Flo has left the building. Um, so don't let that get you down. Like I said, in those moments where you're super scared about your milk supply, the thing is to just keep chugging, keep going, um, and that will help everything. But you will experience dips, but you know, you don't have to dip. But if you do dip and decide, you know, that doesn't make you a bad person either. You know, you you still a loving mother. Yes, yes. If your supply dips, if you decide to breastfeed, if you don't decide to breastfeed, you're you're a good mom. Mm -hmm. No matter what, if you got a combo feed, you're a good mom. If you decide to just pump exclusively, you're a good mom. <laughs> If you decide to nurse exclusively, you're a good mom. If you decide, I just want a formula feed from the very beginning. You don't even want to try best breeding. You just want a formula feed. You are still a good mom. And mom guilt is such a real thing. Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> Avery, like that was one thing just about motherhood in general that I was not prepared for was how intense and how strong the mom guilt is and can be like, I am just a quick story and then we can go on. But um, when it came to breastfeeding, you know, I, um, I was, I was pumping and um, I had only gotten out like one ounce. And in my mind, I'm like, this isn't enough. This isn't enough. But she was only like maybe three days old. And to be announced, was, was, was more than enough you know like that was enough but somebody had given her the bottle and was like there there's hardly anything in here she needs something else and I remember pouring formula into a bottle and I remember taking her to my room and just sitting on the bed and just crying and telling oh. and apologizing to her telling her I am so sorry that I can't produce more for you I'm so mm -hmm. sorry that I'm already failing you because one, I didn't know that babies didn't need that much to begin with. And and two, just I just felt like this intense shame and guilt that I wasn't able to produce more because on social media, I'm seeing all these people with four and six and eight ounces each um, session. And I didn't know that, don't expect that right now anyways. And wow. you know, that's an oversupply. Like that's not even normal, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, not coming against anybody who has oversupply, not at all. Produce what you produce. I think that's wonderful and that's great for you. But I I thought I thought oversupply was normal. And I didn't know that oversupply wasn't normal. If that makes sense. So mm -hmm. yeah. I, I want somebody to uh speak to this comment. I still have a guilt time. I what does it say? There you go. Even with my older kids. Um, maybe you can speak on it. I, I haven't experienced a strong feeling of mom guilt. Um, other than the breastfeeding part when I had the transition over with him for formula. Um, I kind of sort sorta, I mean, I was choosing him, of course, but I also chose my mental and just my body, just like my body just was all over the place. So there was some guilt there. Um, but maybe you can speak to it, Deja, because she said she still has it even with her older kids. Yeah, I uh, experienced it today. Um, Timmy is in this cruising stage. So he and he's getting teeth, two teeth at the top, two teeth at the bottom. So he was by the fridge and he kind of lost his balance and hit his mouth on the bar, and mm -hmm. I saw a little blood. I'm like, I did my baby tooth grooming in, and I, you know, is it there still? So I felt so bad, you know, because, like, oh, my gosh, he's under my care, and I let him, you know, bleed in his gums. You know, thankfully, his tooth is fine. 
Um, I just think, you know, new gums hit some hard, you know. Um, but I think the key is in knowing, having confidence that you are a great mom. Um, God gave you these children because you were fit for it. Nobody else got them kids but you. So I think in regards to mom guilt, you just have to constantly fight it with the truth. You know, I'm a great mom. I love my children. I, you know, lead them in the way of the Lord. You know, just literally encourage yourself and fight against anything negative that makes you feel guilty as a mom. You know, if you're a great mom pushing for them, Let's give more power energy to that. You know, anything negative doesn't deserve the energy for the time. You better preach. <laughs> and I think yeah, I'm, I'm trying to feel that Go way. ahead. I was just saying, I think that it's natural. Like, it's just a natural instinct with moms. Like, you just want to be the best that you can be for these kids. So, go ahead, Soraya, though. Um, I was just going to say that um, I don't know if mom guilt ever goes away. Like, I feel like at every stage, you know, you're, there, there's going to be some sort of, of mom guilt. Um, and I'm still trying to navigate mom guilt because even with Avery, um, I still feel guilty about her breastfeeding journey mm. and seeing at how, you know, like what happened with Carter and how, how much better it was. I wish that I would have, I wish that that would have been Avery's experience. But then I look at her and I'm just like, and y'all heard her and seen her. Avery is just fine. <laughs> Avery <laughs> is healthy. Avery is energetic. Avery is happy. She's well taken care of. Um, and just like you said, just fighting it with the truth that I, I met my baby's need. You know, even if it wasn't fully breast milk and I had to do formula, I <clears> met her <throat> and my baby didn't starve. You know, my, my baby is is healthy and, and she's taken care of. And and I think, too, with moms, um, every stage is is something new. Like when your baby is first born, you know, that's a new stage. But even as they reach new milestones and different age categories, like all of that is still new. You know what I'm saying? Like I've never parented a three-year-old. I've, I've never, when she turns four, I've never parented a four, four-year-old. So all of it's new. And I think that we do the best that we can with what we have. Yes. You know? And, and it's just like, and if we... When you know better, you do better. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times hindsight, you know, as we always hear, hindsight is twenty twenty. And it's like after you go through it, after you do it, you're like, oh, well, maybe I should have done this. Maybe I could have done that. But like I said, you do the best that you can with what you have. And, you know, and I think I, I think for, I think a lot of moms, and I can't speak for every mom, but I think a lot of moms, nobody goes into motherhood um, wanting to be a bad mom. You know what I'm saying? Like every mom goes into it like they want to give their best. They, they want to um, give their children, you know, their best. And you do the best you have, you do the best you can with what you have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Proof. Yeah. Yeah. So mom guilt is, you know, it's a real feeling, but remember, ladies, you know, fight it with the truth. You you got this. And and to Jerica in the comments, she said, I don't know if it's a little lengthy. Okay, it's gonna say she said, I still have mom guilt. I feel guilty of not breastfeeding my baby, but I learned that it's okay. He was bottle fed, he's almost two now. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I feel guilt of certain things, but I know I'm the best mom I could be. This two stage is very new. Yes, Jerrica, you are a great mom. Like you said, so it's okay. You know, Brett, if you choose not to breastfeed your baby, you are not a bad person. You you are not. You're not a bad person. So I God bless you with the twos. We're not gonna say terrible twos, we're gonna say terrific twos. <laughs> <laughs> right, because look, because the gag is 
two ain't that bad, but this <laughs> three year old, I'm <laughs> like, what did you say to me, you little girl? <laughs> did you just roll them eyes at me? I gave you them eyes. She's, with me. And she's thriving. She she is thriving. <laughs> well, my, my oldest is five. We're gonna leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say too, these babies feel the love. Like I feel like you yes. know, when I walk in the house, Jackson be smiling at me and looking like, you know, I they feel that you love them, you know, and as long as they feel loved and comforted and taken care of and warm and fed. You're doing, you're doing the thing. You're doing it. I, I love that. And it's, and it's amazing, you know, babies, you know, they don't have the words yet, but like you said, just seeing them smile and, you know, their face lighting up, that goes to show you, you we're doing something right. This right. little person likes, he loves me. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, yeah. All right, it's uh, 829. <laughs> All right. So we can um, kind of wrap this all into one. Um, so any advice that you all, that you ladies, or that we would like to leave with a new mom or moms wanting to try breastfeeding with future children? Um, and you can kind of wrap that in with like your final words and your words of encouragement. Um, I'll go. Um, I would just say be open minded. Um, everyone's journey is different. Everyone's like we talked about early. Some people can pump more, some people can pump less. Don't look at anyone else's journey and do any comparison. Um and uh, what else? I would say stick with it as long as you can. When you know that you're mentally checked out or that you know like you've you're not there whatever the case may be it's okay because that's my story I had to transition so it's okay you're not a bad mom your baby will be healthy but just try your best like put your best foot forward and try oh, and I feel like you'll succeed either way that's what I'll leave with <laughs> That's good. For me, I will say um, everything Charlene said. Um, but, you know, don't compare yourself, like she said, with anybody on social media. Know that your journey is your own journey. You know, even with all these books and stuff they have, you know, a lot of the whole breastfeeding journey is like true practice on the field, you know, with your own baby. Um, and I will also say to the parents who have more than one child, even with that, don't compare one breastfeeding journey with your firstborn or your secondborn or your, you know, third child. It is totally different. I have found that out with Tyler Milton McGall Jr. and Timothy Michael McGall. Like, it is so different. Like, each baby is a whole different individual. So um, don't even compare with your own children. Um, remember the key to keeping your supply if you really want to breastfeed is like keeping that baby at the breast if your baby's not on the breast and even if you decide you want to supplement if you're going to supplement and you still want to breastfeed and keep a supply don't take a break if you decide to give your baby some formula like if your baby is drinking something else you should still Keep those nipples stimulated so that your body can continue to make milk. Because if you break, that's why they don't want you to go so long without breastfeeding. Because, again, it signals. It's crazy how the body works. But you're telling your body, slow down, milk machine, because we for to wrap this thing up. Um, so always, 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 if your baby's not on the breast, get that pump. If you not pumping, put that baby on the breast. That's really big. Um, and again, don't ever feel like you're not making enough. If you get to that situation in your life, I want you to reach out to a mother you know is breastfeeding and get some encouragement. So, you know, she can hold them shoulders up for you and you can make it out strong. Um, it is possible to keep on. Um, and last thing, um, and we really didn't touch on this, but uh, take care of yourself. 
take care of yourself. You know, um, breastfeeding, it's a lot. Like recently, I went on my first trip without having Timmy. So y'all know I'm key on keeping that breast going, that 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 whole action going. Um, like I couldn't do a lot of things. Like I had to stay behind to pump. Um, I missed some of the show uh, in Branson because I had to go pump. Um, just be mentally prepared. But take care of you. Take care of yourself. Um praying, reading, asking God to help you, saying affirmations. Take care of you, okay? Because it does get hard. Breastfeeding's not easy. Okay, that bad enough. Okay, I'm sorry. My husband told me to wrap it up. I have so much to say, but I will stop. Be obedient. We need a part two. <laughs> yeah, I agree. We definitely have to do a part two. Because um, there was so much that we didn't um, touch on and talk about. Um, like, I guess like the technical mechanical parts of it, kind of like how often you should pump and what are, how do you choose your flange size and things like that. Like all those things also go into breastfeeding. Um, but I think this was a great introduction um, and a great conversation to be had tonight. Um, so some advice that I would give, which this is what I needed when I was a first time mom Find a safe community to get help from. So whether that be, you know, a, a group of, um, of other mommies that are breastfeeding um, or if that's, you know, a lactation consultant, um, get some help. And it's OK to ask for help in this breastfeeding journey. Um, yeah, it's OK to ask for help. And we're here, <laughs> all three of us are here to share our stories, our insights, what happened with us. Um, yeah, get, get a safe community to help you. And if it doesn't work out, if it gets too mentally taxing, whatever the case may be, it is okay with just saying, I'm, I, I can't do this and I, I, I need to find, you know, an, an alternate route or do something else to get my baby fed. And that is okay. You're not a bad mom. You can try again with the next baby. Or, you know, I know some people who actually have their bodies to relactate later on, you know, like, and I, I don't know how much work that is, but I know that that is something that I've heard um, other people have done and so it's possible to do if that's what you want to do you know mm -hmm. but at the end of the day y'all fed is best fed is best so Deja was there anything else in the comments that we needed to um, answer or talk about I, I like that Jamie said this she said uh, take advantage of your resources Usually lactation consultants are free at the hospital. You deliver that and they can do weighted yeah. feed if you're unsure of how much your baby is taking from the breast. They can also help you come up with a personalized plan to get you and baby on the right track and make sure your flings are the correct size. That is really key if you're yeah. pumped. Yes. Definitely. And you know what? This is just a side note. I did not know that they made flange sizes like as small as like like 10 or 12. Wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I did not know that. So for me with pumping, when I started pumping with Carter, I wasn't getting that much out. And I was talking to, la to the lactation consultant and she was like, well, what's your phalange size? And I was like, well, this is the smallest that came with my, was it Medela? Is that how you pronounce it? Medela. Medela, Medela pump. I think it was like a 22 or something. And she was like, nah, that's probably too big. You need like maybe a 15. And I was like, a what? And she was like, yeah, just get a 15. And I was like, where do you even find that? And she's like, oh, just on Amazon. I had no clue <laughs> that they made. That did better for you? Yes. Hmm, it did. It. Switch yeah. It. I used to stand at 24. Right. And so I, and I thought that that was the only sizes that it came in because that's what most pumps come with is like that 22, 24. 
Um, but no, they make them down to even 15. And so that's what I've been using. And my milk um, production or my output was a lot more than when I was just using just the standard um, flange size. Yeah. So Amazon, let me look. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if, you know, if you're pumping and you're maybe not getting that much out, just check to see, you know, what your flange size is. It and the right, bra, the right pumping bra too plays a, a role mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. So Deja, I actually use the bras that you suggested um, from Amazon. I can't even know. I think it's, I think it's by Medela or Medela. Yeah. yeah. It's like the, the cooling sleep bra um, yeah. I live in those okay? <laughs> yes. they're the most comfortable bras ever so comfy oh. <laughs> but now that I'm starting to pump more now I need to find like a hands free pumping bra I got you I'll send you something okay thank you girl because <laughs> now that we get there I'm like yeah I can't just be holding it you know I got a toddler and him both and, yeah <laughs> yes, no. text me so I can send it. But this has been okay. fun. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it was. Thank you, everyone who's in the chat. Thank y'all so much. Oh. Okay. He sees himself in the mirror and he's like having a whole conversation. Um, but thank y'all so much for joining us tonight. We really appreciate all the interaction, all the comments, the questions. Um this was amazing. And we'll definitely have to figure out. Thank you. <laughs> Woo! Yay. <laughs> Thank you all so much for your wonderful and kind comments. Um, we'll definitely have to figure out when we can schedule um, a part two. Because like I said, there was so much that we did not um, cover just about our personal experiences. We didn't even get to the mental health or like the mental toll that it can take on you too. I think we touched on it a little bit. But that can be a whole live and a whole session within itself as well. So, do you ladies have anything else before we sign off? My husband told me I have talked too much, so I'm going to be quiet. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you <were saying> this <laughs> What'd you say, sis? I said you were saying some good stuff. Thank you. you mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I'm good. Yeah. Okay. Fun. If you all need any questions answered, just inbox either of us. We're more than happy mm -hmm. to assist yeah. you all. Encourage you all. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Thank you. See y'all next time. Bye. Bye.